Hey, what's up coders, I'm Coderius, and today we are going to add graphics to our bowling game. If you missed the previous episodes, check out the link in the description to start your first Unity project and create the basic gameplay elements. I've also added links to the assets used in this video. There is a texture for the bowling lane, the bowling ball, as well as a brand new bowling pin to replace the cylinder we used previously. I made the pin with the free software Blender together with a very short tutorial about it. Alright, there is also a link to a sound database where I got the bowling sounds used in this video. And that's pretty much it. Before we start, you can always take a moment to like and subscribe, and I see you in Unity. Alright, there are plenty of textures available on the internet for free or sometimes for a price. I found a nice bowling lane texture on Sketchfab for free, with the condition to credit the artist who created it. I've added additional links in the description where you can find free textures for your games. Make sure you download the four files of the texture, and yeah, I will never say it uh, enough. Let's stay organized and create a folder named Materials and a subfolder called Lane to save our files. Materials define how a surface should be rendered depending on the texture, tiling, color tints, and more. Material options are depending on the shader that is used to render a material. And yeah, another technical word, shaders. Shaders are small scripts containing all the mathematical information required to calculate the color of a pixel based on lighting and other parameters. So in order to create a new material, right-click in the project folder and select Create Material. Let's give it a name like Lane. This is an empty material, we must now provide the textures. Material can be extremely complex and use various shaders to create fancy visual effects, but here we will stick to the essential. First, the albedo. That's the main color or texture of the material. Let's drag and drop the base color texture to the albedo in the material. You will find textures with various names, but in general what is referred to as color or base color goes into the albedo. I usually lock the material window so this, the inspector is not switching back and forth to the texture when I click on it. We can lock the inspector by clicking on the small locker in the top right corner, so now we drag and drop the color to the albedo, but nothing happens. Of course, we also have to assign the material to our mesh. One easy way to do it is to drag and drop the material to the mesh in the, in in the interface like this. Now if we delete the albedo by selecting it and pushing delete on the keyboard, the, texter, the texture disappears. Ok, let's cancel that operation to bring it back with Ctrl Z. We have a texture, but it looks strange. One thing that we have to change is the tiling of the texture. What Unity does here is that it stretches the texture to the entire bullying lane, reason why it looks so elongated. With the tiling, we can cut the texture and repeat it over and over. Make sure you are adjusting the main map. You can play around with the figure. I'll use a value of 5, which looks ok. Great, there are other textures in this pack. Next we have the roughness. The roughness is how light rebounds on certain material. The rougher the material, the less light it reflects. We can drag and drop the roughness map in the metallic slot of the material and then control the smoothness with the slider. This bowling lane is quite old, so I think a value between 0 0.5 and 1 seems ok. Next is the normal map. The normal map gives the 3D natural look to the texture, but only by adjusting how light rebounds on the texture. It's not creating additional ge geometry, unlike bump maps or height maps. In this pack we also have an occlusion map that we can drag and drop. Occlusion maps give a more realistic look to shadows. Well, in this example it does not change much. Ok, we can now unlock the inspector. Alright, next step is to change our pins. For that I created a pin in Blender and, ma and made a mini tutorial about it. There is a link in the description and in the card that should pop up in the top right corner. Blender is a fantastic professional 3D modeling tool and amazingly it's free. I don't have a lot of experience with 3D modeling, but this small tutorial will show you that even with basic knowledge we can create assets for our games. If you don't want to use Blender, just download the pin I made from GitHub and you should be good to go. Ok, if you watched the previous video, the pin placement was a bit cumbersome, so let's save time and use a monkey trick. Drag and drop the pin as a child of the cylinder. Now drag and drop the new pin one level up to the pin group and delete the old cylinder. Then we just have to set the scale back to 1 and adjust the Y position a little bit. And voila, our pin is placed where it should be. Do that for the rest of the pins. Still a bit repetitive, but we will avoid recalculating each position. Ok, 
Okay, next we want to add sound. I found some realistic recordings of booing games on freesoundeffect.com. Check the link in the description. The sound is free for education purpose, like if you are following this tutorial, but you would need to acquire the license should you want to use this sound effect in a real video game project. Alright, so let's create a sound folder and copy the sound effects in it. I used the boolean 1 for when we throw the ball and boolean 2 for when we hit the pins. The sound concept in Unity is quite simple. There is an audio source which plays music or sound and an audio listener which can receive audio played by the source. In general, the audio listener is placed on the camera as it represents the position from which we are looking at the scene. And when we create a new camera, it always comes with a new audio listener. Let's then add a new audio source to our ball. We can then drag and drop the Boolean 1 sound effect into the audio clip of the component. We don't want the sound to play when we start the game, so let's uncheck the play on awake checkbox and go back into our code to play the sound when we actually throw the ball. For this we will add few lines of code in our function. To go back to the script we can just double click on the script in the inspector or in the project folder. In our update function let's add brackets after our if statement to add more instructions. There are many ways to play the sound, but in short we want to grab a reference to our audio source. So we create a new audio source, call it source and grab the reference with the getComponent function. Then we just call the play function. This is a very simplistic approach and would not work if we have many audio sources for instance. Bracky made a very nice tutorial about creating an audio manager, it's really worth looking at it. In this example I just wanted to show you that we can play sounds easily with few lines of code. We can do the same to play the sound effect when pins are hit, so let's add a new audio source to our pin group and copy our booling 2 sound effect in it. Let's remove the play on awake as well. We will introduce a new concept here, how to detect that the pins are actually hit by the ball. We use colliders. Colliders provide information about the interaction between game objects, like if a game object hits another game object. We could use the colliders that are on the pins, but it would be messy and the sound would be played many times each time a pin has some sort of physical interaction with another game object. What we can do is add a box collider to our pin group and move it around the pins. This box collider does not physically interact with other objects, but will just trigger the sound when the ball enters that box. So make sure to check the is trigger checkbox. Let's then add a new script to our pin group. We can call it strike or whatever name you find appropriate and open the script in Visual Studio. Okay, now how to trigger the sound? There is a specific function called onTriggerEnter that we can use on any game object. This function will check if another collider has entered the pin group collider during the current frame. Alright, if you start typing on trigger enter, Visual Studio IntelliSense will in principle create the rest of the function automatically. There is one argument, which is the other collider that is actually entering the collider of the pin group. Let's make a quick test and write the name of the game object that is entering the collider in the console with debug.log. We can try and start the game, move the ball inside the collider, and we see that the ball has effectively entered the collider as we see the name in the console. So let's now play the sound. We first want to check that it's really the ball that has entered the collider and not another game object. So we check if the name of the collider equals the name we gave to our bowling ball game object. We just printed it in the console. And then we play the sound. Easy, huh? Same story, we create an audio source, call it source, get the, the audio source component and play it. All right, let's try. Yay, the sound is playing just fine. Alright, I wanted to squeeze everything in 3 videos, but I guess I'll make another one to cover the next topics. In the next video we will talk about saving data like high score, scene management and creating a simple user interface. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial so far, leave a comment below to tell me what you think and if you are still here it means you probably like the content, I hope. Thank you for giving a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thank you very much for watching, keep coding and see you next time!